I'd like to propose a question. Is it ethical to consume true crime content? With the release of a new show on Netflix based on Jeffrey Dahmer, true crime has seen a rise in viewers. The very definition of true crime explains that it's meant to be a learning experience, allowing viewers, listeners, or readers a view into the world of crime itself. When does that become a problem, though? Does it only perpetuate the cycle of crime, granting future criminals a guide into how not to get caught? Can it idolize terrible figures, making their victims an afterthought? Maybe it's necessary for humanity as a whole, showing the darker sides of what we're capable of, pointing out the warning signs. The origin of the true crime genre dates all the way back to the 16th century, caused by the development of the printing press and criminal justice. During these early years, many of the writings focused on sin, showing an early religious understanding of crime and criminals in general. During the 1800s, detective stories would see their inception and cement true crime as a literary genre. It would be in the year 1996 that true crime would be popularized, caused by the book Cold Blood by Truman Capote. In today's time, it's possible to find any kind of true crime content that you could search for. Whether it be unsolved murders, serial killers, cults, there is never a shortage of media that falls into the genre. The current trends indicate that true crime is now seen less in literature and more in podcasts, providing an easy listening experience based on the topic you're interested in. This started in 2014 when the podcast Serial broke podcasting records and achieved 5 million downloads on iTunes. Four years after this, Serial would reach staggering numbers of 340 million downloads. A common conversation surrounding true crime as a genre is the fact that it forces the families of those affected to relive their traumas. One such case of this pertains to Netflix's new show, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story. The show is described as taking place from the many victims' point of views, showing the horrendous crimes of Jeffrey Dahmer from a different perspective. The problem arose when the living members of the victim's family spoke out against Netflix, showcasing the fact that Netflix did not consult with these family members about making the show. With an easily digestible medium such as television, it can be distasteful to reenact the many crimes of a serial killer without consulting the real people who are affected. It may also be argued that due to the medium, it can be easy to forget that you're watching something very real, something that actually happened to people. A corporation such as Netflix can easily exploit the genre of true crime to earn money at the expense of people's suffering. This is evident when you take into account the fact that they never consulted the families of those affected. Netflix would find more problems due to the fact that they had labeled the show with the LGBTQ tag due to the fact that Jeffrey Dahmer was gay. This tag would regularly be used for shows that featured healthy gay relationships or featured the subject matter in a positive light. Using this tag on a show about a serial killer only furthers the stigma that LGBTQ people face. This tag would be removed after backlash, but it still gives a negative impression that Netflix made that decision in the first place. This negative representation does not relieve homophobia only causing more troubles for the members of the LGBTQ community. While the show does give insight into Jeffrey Dahmer's mental illnesses and internalized homophobia, it can be argued that it does not make it a point to call these out and inspire a conversation surrounding them. The show, however, plays these up for suspenseful situations rather than an educational experience. This type of portrayal makes his actions seem like those of a horror movie, rather than actions that a human being actually committed. True crime should never blur the line between entertainment and education. When the line does become blurred, people can forget that these crimes are very real and begin idolizing these terrible people as if they are simply villains in any other form of media they would consume. Another conversation surrounding the show is the fact that many documentaries, books, and other forms of media have already been made about Jeffrey Dahmer. Many people have questioned why a show like this even needed to be made, as it adds absolutely nothing to the already existing pool of content. The show does get some points right, such as pointing out the flaws in the police system and the many mistakes that allowed Jeffrey Dahmer to continue his terrible crimes. On the other hand, it does perpetuate the cycle of trauma inflicted on the many people who were affected by said crimes. One scene in the show is a faithful reenactment of a family member's reaction in the courtroom during Jeffrey's trial. Unfortunately, Netflix neglected to inform this family member that their reaction would be reenacted, potentially causing them to live through a situation that must be extremely hard to bear once again. Media such as this Netflix show always seem to showcase the criminal, usually found in the title. This type of showcase makes it seem as if the victims are less important than the criminal, 
making them out to be an afterthought while putting the perpetrator in the spotlight. Glamorization of these criminals sets a terrible precedent for the future of the genre, and only seeks to further the wrongful consumption of the genre as a whole. True crime should always memorialize the victims and vilify the criminals who caused harm to others, taking away a real person's life forever. If this precedent is allowed to continue, corporations will continue to profit off of people's suffering. The continual exploitation that happens only furthers the cycle of abuse, granting terrible people, such as Jeffrey Dahmer, a way to be remembered. Glorification of figures like these will only cause more and more to appear, hoping for their chance to get into the history books while actively harming others. For true crime to truly prosper and continue, creators must first seek to end the current trends the genre follows. I've chosen to display the names and faces of Jeffrey Dahmer's victims as a memorial to them. This brings me back to my question at hand. Is it possible to engage with true crime without causing harm? Do you believe that consuming true crime content is only making the problems worse? Is it okay for true crime to even exist? Let me know what you think.